Hello everybody and welcome back to the English Shooting live stream. I of course will be your host Callum this evening and a big thank you uh, for everyone joining. Of course for the regulars you know what the deal is. For anyone new, welcome. This is all an interactive live stream talking about all the past week's shooting news and topics but don't be afraid to have your opinions heard about anything that I say or anyone else in the chat and also feel free to bring up topics topics, ask questions and get involved and whether you've been watching these for the past, I don't know, three, four years or you're brand new, don't forget to hit that like button, like, uh, like button, hit the subscribe button because we do this every single week, half, half 8 p.m. UK time. Uh, every Thursday uh, and yeah liking subscribing chatting it all helps beat the YouTube algorithms helping us to reach more people and advertise this incredible sport of shooting but yes I hope you've all had a fantastic part uh, past week hopefully with a lot of shooting filled in between uh, as well we've got some fairly cheery news for once uh, th this week talking about the new Korth Revolver from Cotswold Classic Arms. You'll all know my admiration for Cotswold Classic Arms and I'm actually running uh, one of their builds for my mini rifle gun. So it's uh, well, my mini rifle competition gun. So it's a company that I know a lot about um, and I know Otto fairly well and he never does things uh, by half so it's going to be really, really interesting seeing these revolvers come out and seeing uh, them living up to the quality that I think everybody's expecting. But we're going to be talking a little bit more that about that in more detail uh, in a bit. There's been some less than cheery news. We've uh, had an interesting uh, incident uh, where somebody's used a illegally held firearm to defend their themselves, their property. Uh, I'll be looking a little bit closely uh, at that and maybe going over what the laws are here in the UK, what you can own, what can you do with it in those situations. Um, spoiler, not a lot. Uh, certainly not owning an illegal handgun but we're more on that later uh, we've got a little bit of an update from Devon and Cornwall those of you will know with the Plymouth shooting they came down hard on law-abiding perfectly sensible like upstanding firearms owners revoking their certificates for seemingly no reason uh, and there's been in one of those cases uh, a bit of a, a plot twist with I think a little bit more incompetence um, of coming from Devon and Cornwall and it looks like this guy is gonna at the bare minimum be without his certificates without a single shred of justification or explanation for a total of 14 months minimum absolutely uh, insane we've had a little bit of a laugh given um, courtesy of a UK journalist out in the States taking on obviously a topic that they know nothing about which is firearms ownership gun control and um, you know what's happening out there in the States at the moment uh, making herself look right like a right tit so we'll be looking at, at that uh, a little closer uh, later on and I will be giving if you have already seen it you, or you're going to see it again we're going to be talking a little bit about the Maglode AR-15 22 magazines and a little bit of update with those. There is new breaking news with those uh, as we had new parts delivered today. So we will be talking about that um, in quite de in depth. So if anybody's ordered those pre-ordered, then please feel free to ask any questions. I'll try my best to to answer them. But yes, the uh, the main exciting heading for this evening uh, is a new long barreled revolver for the UK market now most of you in the UK will know what I'm talking about straight away for those watching abroad you might be going what the hell is a long barreled revolver just as a quick refresher within UK law short arms unless they are uh, muzzle loading are section 5 the equivalent of a class 3 in america they are for all intents and purposes prohibited to the average person and short arms is a very particular expression within our law because it is defined as anything with a barrel under uh, 12 inches or a barrel or a total length of less than 24 inches uh, this means that 
well, the godfather himself, uh, Alan Westlake, was like, well, if I just make a revolver or, or a handgun that's got a 12-inch barrel and a 24-inch overall length, then it conforms to Section 1 of our laws, and then people with firearm certificates can uh, buy them. And Cotswold Classic Arms are, are making use of the law, uh, and they have come up with um, a Korth uh, revolver. You might have seen this image beforehand, um, floating around on Facebook. This is, as far as I'm aware, it, I don't know if this is a, a real image or a mock-up, um, but it's certainly the only sort of image of it really existing out there. Um, I, I'll be completely honest, I personally haven't heard a lot or know a lot about uh, Korth revolvers, but everyone I've spoken to that is remotely experienced with revolvers, mainly Connors, is saying that they are the absolute dog's bollocks when it comes to revolvers they make incredible guns so to have not only another option on the uk market but to have something of super high quality and also competition focused um, i think could be a real game changer the price may prohibit that but you know, it's as the saying goes, you get what you pay for. Now, there hasn't been a huge amount of details put out there already, um, but I was uh, talking with Otto just before uh, the stream, and he was very kind enough to send over the full catalogue, um, which he's happy for me to show you guys. So uh, we're going to see what options are available, what prices are available, what the options and specs uh, all are. Uh, so yeah, for those, you know, maybe before we get into the nitty gritty of this, again, a little bit of backstory. The reason this is so exciting, not just to have something at the top end, something that could potentially surpass in terms of quality and performance, anything that we've, we've had before in, in the UK and, you know, yeah, we've got to see if these pass the mustard or cut the mustard first, but we have a very limited selection of LBRs available to us here whilst it, it, it's something that's growing and is popular and new revolvers that are brought out always seem to do well there really isn't that that bigger of a, a selection some of you will re uh, remember this is sort of like the the king uh, at the moment in terms of competition revolvers i did the review of it if you want to watch the uh, the full video later please do but this is a uk legal uh, 686 long barreled revolver smith and wesson uh, but this is truly like a custom gun um, the the way that they're built, the way that they're imported, uh, it's it's all pretty much made uh, made to measure. So I had the opportunity to shoot this a while ago, um, and and that was an experience of in itself because these things are not common. Uh, and then you know if you want to hear me waffling on, you can go and watch that video in full. Uh, but the those are made by Rude Fat Dog. They are certainly a solid option on the UK market, uh, and certainly in terms of competition revolvers. Uh, arguably the best option available but they will run you these i think in its basic spec you're talking about three to three and a half thousand pound for one of these builds uh so although that's i'm actually that's actually a looks like a muzzle loading or maybe a section five um unfortunately the website doesn't have a huge lot of details but there you go you can see it there's there's a revolver i was just talking about uh but yeah so serious money but then a lot of time you know customization has gone into it and i know roughly the procedure of getting these guns into the uk legally and it's very in-depth and as you'd imagine imagine very expensive the the other daddy that used to be about well it was sort of the best and the worst lbr because it was pretty much the only lbr available uh, in the uk uh, and that was the taurus whilst um you know firing solutions if you're interesting um, seems to have one in at the moment i'm pretty sure that these were actually discontinued a lot of people were not happy about that because at the time again there really wasn't any other option if you wanted you know a 357 long barrel revolver you wanted a, a a section one 357 revolver this was really your only option and for it to, to leave was was not good for this uh you know for this area of shooting um but then came you know riding in this is probably what people are familiar with at the moment uh, if you've recently bought an lbr in the uk you've probably bought a chapa again because it's pretty much the only option you're still talking you know 11 1200 pound at the the base price for one of these 
it's still significant. It's a lot of money, but it's still significantly cheaper than the say three, three and a half thousand that you're looking for the Rude Fat Dog six eight six, and and I believe there's about a twelve month wait for one of those. For this, the Chiapa Rhino, you can walk into most gun shops or, or any, I think it's Ray Trade, that are the UK importer. So anybody with a Ray Trade account can get these in. Uh, Magload can if if you really want if we, if you really want one, please hit us up. We can we can sort you out. Uh, but this has really been like the only real solid option, and it's not like the Chiapa Rhino has be is is known to be a competition revolver or is really. 100% suited but people are making do so you know at the moment in terms of options you can go and spend three and a half thousand pound on a competition ready rude fat dog you can probably go and pick up a, a used Taurus for around a thousand pound uh, or you go and buy a, a new chapper or even a used, used chapper those are really your options so that is that's why this Korth revolver it, it gives you know it increases your LPR portfolio uh, or selection by like 25 percent so it's it's going to be a nice option uh, to have on there so let's uh let's have a little bit more um closer look at it now um otto did want me to stress <laughs> that these photos are for illustration purposes only they they will have a 12 inch barrel they will have the the dreaded coat hanger and they will be 24 inches ov overall uh, but obviously they're being made they're in production uh, they don't have the media at the moment to be able to show you exactly the lbr but in terms of the frame the barrel cylinder you know everything between the rod and the long barrel they're going to look exactly uh, the same so um they've got their um, nxr model in 44 magnum six shot i i think i've never really seen this sort of fluting um or, or these cuts in a revolver before it looks absolutely the image isn't the best quality but uh looks like it's done for uh, lightness um maybe make the balance of the revolver uh, a little better i think it just looks mean though all those cuts on it you've got or well, three picatinny rails um so you know if for open shooters there's people shooting open revolver whacking a, a red dot on there isn't going to be a, a, a difficulty at all and again the reason this seems to be so exciting certainly for me is revolver shooting is growing here in the uk mainly thanks to to Yeavely. they are running regular club revolver matches there's a few other places as well i believe the nra does a little bit of revolver uh, as well so the revolver scene is is growing so to have another sort of option and certainly a competition uh, option out there um, is going to be absolutely insane and this like this is definitely the revolver that um deadpool would have right it just looks insane like I, lbr or not and of course again this is in the section 5 format this is it will have a long barrel it will have the the coat hanger um but it's still i i know it spoils it as soon as you put that rod on there as soon as you put the the long barrel it does sort of mess up the look but i, I think these things are going to look absolutely um absolutely insane on the market so you've got an eight shot um nxa 357 uh, option so th again this is something that we have struggled with in in the past is you know the the chapa rhino i think only comes in um 357 and 9 mil uh, there's been rumors about a 44 but i don't think it's coming to uh fu fruition uh, and it's like Connor's you know doing more competitions he's finding that shooting actually in in minor power factor using a nine mil um is is hurting him quite a bit compared to like the the 44 shooters okay there's there's more recoil uh, but it just doesn't have that option I believe the Taurus did have a 357 and also 44 option so again straight away you've got 44 and 357 uh, options here with the the course I mean just look like it's it reminds me of like an ar-15 revolver like don't ask me why but that it's it's like you get those massively cut handguards um on ars um, and obviously like quite bright colors to see again those sorts of cuts these sorts of colors on a revolver you don't seem to see it uh, very often so i think these are going to be very very popular uh, and we will be getting on to 
the price in a minute. I'm sure that's going to be a quite a divisive thing. Um, so you've got the NXI 9mm, so 44, 357 and 9mm uh, options. Again, an 8-shot, that's something, again, that Connors is finding with the uh, uh, with the Chiapa, is that it's only a 6-shot, which makes a huge difference when you're having to, to reload with, with moon clips each time. The re reloading is really the, the make or break of some of these matches. Um, and what one the, this is the NXX, NXS 357 eight shot again more of a classic look but it's it's classic but it's got that that sharp edge to it I think I don't know I think that would be the one I would go for just a little bit more subtle a little bit more understated not not as loud there's nothing nothing wrong with loud but these uh I think that that's just sexy. It's sort of like a blend of of old and and new in there. You know, the the classic meets the modern. Sorry, I'm trying to I'm trying to keep it as uh, um the the best angle as possible. Uh, these again a little bit more traditional. Um, the Korf Classic 357 Magnum revolvers, uh, six shots. You know, there's very similar, almost like similar lineup to say the Chiapa Rhino, where you've got the black. They, I, I can't see a classic chrome version. Don't know if they do one, but obviously this is very similar to the the Nebula version that they do of the uh, the Chiapa Rhino. That maybe I'd go for the classic. I don't know because that that gold and black. That that's pretty tarty, right? That that does look pretty sick. You can't say that these are ugly revolvers, <laughs> right? And yeah, I I really just want to get one in my hands. Um, I'm sure I'm I'm sure Otto will hopefully sort us out with a demo model when they when they land. Uh, but it will be great to get down to the range with one of these and and test it out and see you know, maybe side by side even with like the Chiapa Rhino and shooting this because th it just looks competition ready. Um, it looks like the hammers had work, triggers had work. It looks like adjust adjustable triggers. Maybe I'll just have a look through the um, specs. Um, fast changeable front sight, removable side paddles, front sight for different disciplines, double action and single action trigger, high speed hammer, changeable cylinder in nine millimeter with available changeable cylinder. that's i've completely blown past that that is if i'm reading that that correctly you can swap it between um nine mil and 357 maybe even 22 lr that that would be awesome if you could quickly change it between calibers you know you could have potentially like your you know maybe like a a, a plinking or training um you know cylinder and then sort of your, your match cylinder with the price of ammo at the moment you're going to want to try and save save as much as possible uh so yeah i mean i'm not i'm not a revolver shooter but these look absolutely insane the, the real proof is going to be when they actually drop uh this is a funky looking one <laughs> just look at that look at that front sight that's a serious bit of kit uh, Super Sport ALX 357 six shot it is you know and, and not only are we getting like another option but you know another option in terms of the Korth revolver but there's like what we're we're on our like eighth different variant so there really is going to be something for for everyone again that's just looks like a lovely bit of engineering Super Sports ULX 357 six, 6 shot 22LR as well. Is that like oh, NXS 6 6 inch Magnum? Is that going to be a muzzle? Oh no, it's going to be a 12 inch 12, a 12 inch barrel still. So it's going to be section 1 L, LBR again, 3, NS, NSC and a, NSX um, 357 44. Um, moon clips, speed loaders, changeable eight round cylinder for nine times nine, nine by 19 with moon clips. For all revolvers and 357, 38 special calibers, it's possible to order an optional cylinder in nine mil with and without the moon clip option. That's that I think is going to be a big, big selling point to people having having the option to be, be able to switch between those. 
um i i think a lot of people are going to go absolutely gaga with them um and there we go there's probably the best mock-up we've seen yet um of how it's going to look in the uk i know i know any international viewers look away shield your eyes burn it with kill it with fire whatever but this is the best that we can we can have and i i if we dropped the rod i think that would just that would still be a very good looking revolver just <laughs> the rod is always what spoils it isn't it um barrel shroud identical to non-uk versions with six inch barrels so uh 12 inch cold hammer forged precision barreled optional carbon shroud rod extension as per uk specification so yeah that that's it that's the closest you're going to get at the moment to what it what it's going to look like again i still don't think as lbrs go i don't think that's a bad looking lbr um now then the price <laughs> and a lot of you are going to switch off straight away for this um they're not cheap right just let's get that out there straight away um so you know you can see here you're looking north of five one there six six um four and a half four seven additional accessories and changeables you know a thousand thousand pound for um the changeable cylinder it's a lot of money right and there's a lot of people that are gonna instantly go why would you buy this over a thousand pound um you know chiapa rhino or a thousand pound um taurus you know if you pick one up second hand or, or supposedly new from um firing solutions the same reason you would go and spend five six thousand pound on an accuracy international versus a remington 700 y you get what you pay for and you know unfortunately you know this isn't an a knowing um otto you know quite well it's this is not price gouging it is not uh oh we can charge whatever the hell we want for it so we're just going to pull out pull out pluck out silly money um from what i understand the core revolvers you are talking even if you go and buy them in europe you're still talking three to four thousand pound without it being a uk uh, variant of course they've then got to make it a uk variant it's always going to be a much lower production run it's going to be a special production run that adds cost lower numbers always adds cost there's additional design time which adds adds cost they've then got to ship them over here they then have to be proofed you know proofing a gun can be you know 50 quid per gun minimum and that's if you drive it to the proof house yourself if you have to send it there and it has to be sent back you're then looking 100 quid plus plus just to proof it and then you have vat uh, on top and all of the customs and imports so you know that's why we we routinely see like the 1522 is the best example out in america a 400 dollar gun in the uk 650 seven, 750 pounds you know the like the equivalent of like eight nine hundred dollars they're like effectively double the price if if an if a course i see if i can um Let's see if I can find like how much uh, like the NX model is. Just like going, going price for one of those, just as a comparison. Um, mongoose. No, it's not. Core revolvers. Here we go. So, you can come along with me trying to find this out. <laughs> Um, so you've got the um, NXA 8 shot, 357 Magnum. Let's see if we can go back and find... I'm not going to be able to find it, is it, am I? NSA 8 shot. I think that's it. Black and red grip. 6 inch shroud. So that's not... That's not disgustingly different. Um, NXA 8 shot. Let's go nxa eight shot so you know a revolver in its normal spec um you know five thousand three hundred dollars with the way currency is at the moment <laughs> like for it to be five thousand pound again sounds like a lot of money it is uh well five thousand one hundred pounds so you know something that would cost you in america five thousand three hundred dollars is costing you five thousand one hundred pounds here 
when you compare that to the price difference of a fifteen twenty two, that's actually really really good. Um, I th- I think that's yes, it's it's still I'm I'm not discounting the fact that it's still five thousand, it's still five thousand pound for a revolver. Not discrediting that at all, but in compared to what you would buy elsewhere outside of the UK, um, I don't think that's bad at all. You know, these are obviously incredibly top end competition swanky revolvers right they you know pretty much the best of the best of what you're going to be able to go out and get there you're going to pay for that just like you're going to pay as i said for an accuracy international or bringing it sort of full circle back to Cotswold classic arms uh, the battle arms you know the battle arms at the moment either the lightweight or the ambi is slowly being regarded as the best mini rifle option uh, out there they're not cheap guns you can easily start knocking on the door of four thousand pound in terms of those in terms of those builds depending on the exact spec that that you go for um the the ambi that i'm using at the moment in competition people a lot of people have been asking how much um that cost um it's it's complicated because we didn't buy the full uh the full gun um it was bought in 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 terms of a base base spec and then was obviously pimped out by uh, by magload um but if i if i was to hazard a guess in terms of re- retail with all the magload stuff that's on it you you're going to be looking probably three to three and a half um you can get into a battle arms i think they start around the two to two and a half thousand pound mark and again compared to what's available in the uk that sounds really expensive go out to america and buy a you know go and buy a, a 223 uh, battle arms you're going to be talking not a too dissimilar amount of money go and buy a cobalt kinetics there are ars that regularly run into the multiple of thousands of pounds and i think it's brilliant to see it, the uk market actually has scope for these higher tier higher priced rifles now it shows the development of the sport and certainly i think the biggest tick is the you know the top five top 10 shooters in mini rifle at the moment um, the you know the con- consistently the ones on the podium are using battle arms. It's uh, you know, and a lot of people have switched over from like the fifteen twenty two to a battle arms or even Lantax to to a battle arms. And I think that's the biggest vote of confidence. And again, you might be thinking two and a half, three and a half thousand pounds for a, a you know a two two. Yeah, at the end of the day, it's not a two two. It's a two two three upper receiver set that's been converted with the CMMG conversion kit. There's actually more cost there. They have to be tuned to something that was, you know, it was really never intended to, um, to accept. It was always intended to be a two two three. So you get what you pay for. I think this is just the next evolution of the of the industry of, you know, seeing these practical guns and and. Yes, these revolvers could be very at home within gallery, but I think the biggest demand is going to be from the practical, um, the practical community. So to see things steering into the higher end, to have these higher end options, and you are getting extra for it. You know, let's let's you know not disregard that. It's not like you're just paying for a tarty paint job and you know a little bit a little bit of laser engraving. These are highly tuned custom guns. So. Very, very exciting. Um, again, I, I will try my absolute best to, to make sure that we get one on the channel uh, as quickly uh, as possible. Uh, and yeah, I you know all the best to Otto in, in bringing them in, and, and I really hope they they come in uh, they come in soon. I did see Otto pop up um, in the chat. Uh, you might have already uh, said it, but um, is there an expected landing date? That would be very very good to know very interested um and a quick quick segue the uh, english shooting beer review uh we are back on the northern monk uh new world india pale ale really really liking this one it's still part of the leftover that we had from the northern shooting show but seems to be my go go to stream beer at the moment but yeah let me know what you think um what, what you think of the the corth are you are you sold um if you are interested drop a line to Cotswold classic arms you can find them get in contact with them uh, on facebook um or if you you get stuck please feel free to drop me an email i will point you in the right direction and um and get you uh um get you in touch with with the man himself um 
Yes, I, I do have to say, yeah, had a fantastic day today, actually, um, at the Festival of Speed. As you all know, um, I live uh, not too far away from Goodwood. It's about 45 minutes. So I wasn't too sure that I was going to go this year. Uh, but sort of last minute, just thought I'd go there for the uh, for the Thursday and um, and have a, a mosey mosey about. There's, that's really only aimed at one person, and and now he's going to uh, now he's going to re. Dan, if you if you couldn't tell, I'm joking. <laughs> I wouldn't I wouldn't go without you. But you know, stop tearing your hair out. Um, looks like something out of Halo or something. Um, yeah, it's it's different. It's unique. It's, it looks, it does look ab absolutely amazing. Can you attach a mini scope? I would imagine so. There's enough Picatinny rail uh, on there. Um, there's you know, there's enough Picatinny rail on there to put a lot of accessories. Let's let's be honest about that. Uh, people talking about the cylinder kit. So yes. Um, Weasel Mania just looked at Korth. That's a six thousand dollar revolver. William, no, no hacksaw and angle grinder. <laughs> uh, talked about the price. Talked about the calibers. It's a good looking revolver. NSX eight. I think I don't think there's a bad. I think there's maybe, let's say, um, Marmite flavors. I don't, but I don't. I don't think there's any of them that look particularly bad. Like I can appreciate the look of of all of them. I'm sure, you know, some people are going to go I absolutely absolutely hate the look of that, but I can certainly appreciate what has been done with all of them. I don't think any any one of them is is ugly. And I think every single one of them, if you want a bit of show factor down the range, the first one to rock up to a club with one of these is going to have a lot of interest. Um that's that's uh that's for sure. Urban Space Monkey, UK PSA Action Air, membership request and payment sent. Awesome. Uh, yeah, if if you're at all interested in, in getting into practical shooting in the UK, I, I just, like, don't beat around the bush. Don't fanny about. Just join the UK PSA. There's there's other benefits as well, uh, like shooting insurance. Um, there's um, uh, legal expenses insurance in case your certificates are unfortunately revoked or you have you know, legal issues in that regard. Um, and then you're also, you also have liability uh, insurance and then you can start your way onto the, the high level matches. You can go and do your your safety courses. It's not a requirement for you to be a UK PSA member to go onto a safety course, but I don't know why you wouldn't. Like it's like 40, 45 pound a year to join the UK PSA and it, and it covers your insurance. And it's also justification for you to um, start getting into to practical shooting. JP, today, today's Supreme Court victory for the Second Amendment has reverberated across the pond. Um, it has. We're not. I'm not necessarily going to stick into the nitty gritty of what's going on in terms of the bills that that are being passed. But in terms of a UK centric bit of news around that, uh, we will be talking about uh, uh, one silly little journalist. Are the Alpha Pro still available? That's what I've used for the past four years. The Alpha, um, is that not what uh, Alan Westlake converts? LB, oh, long barrel, Alpha. I think it does ring a bell. ACP shooting. Let's have a look and see if I can find one. Oh, okay. Um, so this is an alpha, another another option. Um, alpha LBR long barrel pistol. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, I mean, it looks like a decent bit of kit, but it definitely, you can see it's one of these ones with the fore end and it's obviously been, you know, modified to be more, more revolver uh like um i don't i don't think they're still available obviously you can pick them up second hand um you know that's not bad bad price i don't i've never shot one myself never had hands-on experience with them so i couldn't tell you what they're like but uh 
but it is another option. But in terms of when I talk about options, like yes, there's always a second hand market for like the Taurus, the Alphas, things like that. But really when I'm reviewing a gun or I'm like, you know, doing it from a consumer stance, um, really the in terms of the options available, it has to be ones that you can buy new. Uh, you know, it's like saying you can go and buy a, you know, it's, it's like doing a car review and, you know, com- you know, comparing it to say like a 360 Ferrari. Like, yeah, you know, like 20 years ago, you could go and buy one new in the showroom. But at the moment, you know, they're, they're, they're a used car. It's about what's currently available there uh, on the market to buy to buy new with a warranty from a, from a dealer, this, that, and the other. Although people do warranty used guns as well. Um, <laughs> 117 watching... 49 likes that's a lot of Devon and Cornwall officers keeping an eye on you it's not just Devon and Cornwall uh but yeah that's um at the the moment it's uh 108 and 64 people that have liked it so hit the like button like again if you're if you're watching you're not liking why are you watching unless obviously you're from Devon and Cornwall and it's now now your job and you're absolutely sick of um, having to watch me every week as as part of your assignment and, you know, have mental scarring going through my internet search history. I just do it to fuck with them. You know, I'm not really interested in in all of that. I just literally, you know, NCA, whoever's watching me, I just want to really mess up in in the head. (laughs) Like, imagine the court date, them reading... um, uh, reading the website addresses like yes uh there was there was a joke there was a guy a comedian uh what was it joe joe lycett um i only skim read this the he, the guy's already been like cancelled before but he's recently been questioned by the police because somebody com- somebody went to one of his shows his stand-up shows and he said an offensive joke or something that they found offensive so they reported him for hurty words and the police investigated it and he um he said the you know so he was he basically had a formal line of questioning over a joke during a paid stand up routine anyway and he said the the best bit the silver lining was having to get the officer to write in his statement something about a big donkey dick <laughs> because that was apparently part part of the joke so if you're going to do a joke that's going to get you know, get your questioning, at least get a line in there like that, right? Because the officer's probably writing that down going, oh, I fucking hate my job. Like, why? Why did why did we have to, you know, pick this guy up? Anyway, it's maybe a bit TMI, but anyway. Glad you guys are getting them. These are cool. Yeah, they certainly look like it, that's for sure. Uh, auto confirming price are comparable with the US price how you've managed to do that I don't know I mean like just for instance like at, so what was they there were $5,300 to GBP so you know five and a five thousand three hundred um dollars uh, works out to about four thousand three hundred pounds at the moment so they're only eight hundred pounds more than the direct sort of comparison to the US price but 800 quid for you know the the fact that it's got an extra shroud it's had the modification of the rod it's had to go through our our proof house which is again you know 100 quid on its own that's really impressive to keep it I think that close Um, you would are you do have to ask why the 1522 is 700 pounds over here you know when when you've got a five thousand three hundred um, dollar revolver, that's that's five thousand one hundred pounds. But yet you've got a four hundred, three hundred and fifty, four hundred dollar gun, and that's costing us, you know, seven hundred pounds. So again, I suppose you know that hundred the hundred pound difference of the proofing on a five thousand pound gun is very small compared to say you know 700 pound gun but anyway i still think it's the best take i still think they should be a lot cheaper over here for 5 to 10k you can get a um barrett 50 semi-auto rifle uh 
not in the UK. <laughs> you could get a, a bolt action 50, not, not a semi-auto, unless you're a section 5 dealer. Uh, so I'm just catching up on your uh, all your comments. Uh, for beer, if you are ever in California, I recommend visiting Stone Brew in San Diego. Um, hopefully one day I will I'll get that opportunity. Have you done any target rifle shooting? Uh, yes, a very long time ago. It's not a discipline. Again, I know a huge amount that I've done amount uh, a huge amount of. In, in, I guess when you say target rifle, you mean like 308 TR. Um, you know, straight jackets, gloves, all, all of that sort of stuff. Um, I have a huge admiration for the accuracy and precision of TR. It's just not a discipline that has a huge amount of appeal. It's it's one of these things, you know, uh, I did have a Remington 700, whilst I know that's not a, a, a you know, a TR rifle, but... I, I, I used to take that down to Sentry at Bisley at 600 yards... And, you know, okay, yes, with TR, you have iron scopes. I, I had a, um, a magnified scope on there. But I was just like V-ball after V-ball after V-ball after V-ball. And it's like it, like, it genuinely got a little bit boring after a while. You know, after you've put, you know, 20, um, 20 rounds down range. And at the moment, you know, that's what, like a good 10, 15 quids worth of ammo. Um, and it's like okay, I've hit the V-ball 20 times in a row. Great. Like, how do I spice this up? Um, and that's why practical shooting has and, and does appeal to me so much more because there's more elements to it. You know, it's it's never you're like, okay, you're shooting at, say, the same target, be that steel plate in um, in shotgun or, you know, an IPSC micro mini or, or full size uh, in, say, mini rifle or, or handgun or whatever. But you know the targets are the same but the target presentation is is always different every stage that you go to will be different you know you can go to you know you know the same level three every single year you know we're, we're at the the scott uh, scottish championships um this weekend so you know that that's a match that i've been to two or three times now um you know back to back and every stage is different you know, it's the same range, it's the same people building the the stages, but every year there's a there's a new challenge. The, the you know the same. Um, actually, I think the Scottish is the only one that I've like been to multiple times. So I went to Borders once, and they don't do a level three anymore. Been to Coats of Iron once, never been to Borders. Did the British Masters two or three times, but that no longer does it. So yeah, Scottish is like the only one I've done back to back. But anyway, um, <laughs> uh, mini rifle like this year's Basildon. The stages were all completely different to the year before. So anyway, it's every competition is new. It's fresh. It's a different. You know, you've got that mental aspect of having to plan through the stage. You've then got the ac accuracy aspect, and you've also got the speed aspect. So you've got the physicality, the the quickness, and and balancing that all together. That's why. That's why I never get bored of practical shooting because it's it's always it always feels new new and different. With TR, it's like you know how many times can I put you know put a, a, something on a V ball um, on the same target? You know, after a while, it's you know of, of course then you start going after the the marginal gains and and that's when the real precision, the real skill and craft comes into it. And again, I have a lot of respect for that, but it just doesn't doesn't really tickle tickle me if uh, if i'm gonna gonna be honest like gallery i do want to do some more gallery but that's purely on furthering my own skills as a as a shooter not necessarily because like i want to go and do gallery um i'm not going to say it's going to be like a chore um because you know all shooting's fun again if someone put 100 rounds of 308 and a you know quad lock uh, tr rifle in front of me and said fill your boots i'd shoot every single one of those 100 rounds um, I wouldn't be complaining, but yeah, it's just practical. It, it's just, I think it's the funnest. I think it's the funnest discipline and, and I sort of overlook everything else because of it. It's like, it does everything for me. Like, why would I look elsewhere? But I'm sure there's TR rifle shooters that say exactly the same as for, for TR. 
uh, happy you got stuck in the festival of speed traffic as per usual um yeah it gets a bit manic if you ever want to go to the festival of speed or any goodwood event get there early Tr like trust me um daniel don't don't get upset i didn't go without you <laughs> Callum, when are you coming back over to Nitsa to shoot pistols uh, with me? Um, we as as soon as we can. It's a time and money thing. It's not it's not necessarily expensive to go over to Nitsa, but bearing in mind bef before we went um, out to the states, we went two months back back to back. So um, you know that, and it's not whilst it's not cheap. It's usually two of us that goes. You're talking. Um, you know, 100 quid per person in flights, it's 150 quid for a car, 100 quid hotel, plus ammo, plus, you know, so before you you know it, it's for a couple of people to go out there, it can end up setting you back five, 600 pounds. Um, yeah, that's, that's what, you know, 300 quid each, right? It's not to go, in, uh, go there for a full day pistol shooting, you can't, as a Brit, you can't do it any cheaper, that's for sure. But when you start doing it every single month, like, 300 pound 300 pound a month that that starts to to add up um and and it's also time it sucks out a whole weekend for us and and at the moment I've been having a little bit more time off at the weekends uh much needed but it's you know I, I, we we were going away quite a lot prior to to america either you know matches or um you know business or whatever shows and it takes a toll if you don't have any downtime. So at the moment, I'm cherishing my weekends for time off, although saying that I'm in Scotland this weekend on, on work. So um, actually, on that note, visiting uh, Phoenix in Barnsley, a place that I've been meaning to go back to for a number of years. Glenn, who owns and runs Phoenix, um, an you know, amazing bloke, really love his uh, his whole ethos with the club. It's, it's not just a business. It's not just there to you know, to pay him a wage. He's passionate about getting new people into the sport and promoting it and, and making people interested in shooting sports. So um, I've never done a full video there. I'm hoping to have some time to be able to do that um, on Saturday. If any of you guys, uh, anyone watching, want to come down on Saturday and hang out, if you remember there, um, Connors and I will be there. We're aiming to be there from about midday, um, depending on how long we spend for lunch. Uh, but at least at, we we should be there at the latest one o'clock, and we'll probably be there till till fairly late in the afternoon. So, um, if you do want to come down to Phoenix, we're we're actually there on business. So Phoenix um, Phoenix Range has started stocking Magload, so we uh, we're going up there to sort of talk them through a f through bits uh, through a few bits, um, give them a bit of a demo, have some time on the range. So so yeah, that that will be the Saturday, and then on Sunday we're shooting. Uh, the Scottish Shotgun Level Three, uh, which again should be should be a decent weekend. Uh, but yeah, if you want to come hang out at Phoenix, please please feel free. Uh, Johnny Aspect, just like to say thanks, Callum's your video motivated me motivated me to apply for my FAC. It arrived a few weeks ago. And yesterday I picked up a second-hand Lantac Raven 22LR. It was going so well. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't resist. Um, no, that's brilliant. Like, thank thank you for taking the time to let let me know that. That's exactly why we're on the channel. Yes, to have a bit of a laugh and a rant here and there as well. It's, it's my coping mechanism, right? Um, but that's that's the that's why I do this to to help make it as easy as possible and attract people in into this sport again very similar to to glenn that's that's why i have a huge amount of respect for him um but fantastic that it, you've got it and that you've got your first gun um i'm not i'm not gonna sit here and have a go at you for buying a raven um i promise <laughs> it's still a very decent gun um should just stop talking there right uh <laughs> But if you watch the channel, why have you bought a raven? No, it's it's fine. If you enjoy it, you you enjoy it. Just there are other options. Um, <laughs> uh, but if you got it from second hand, if if you got it second hand, at least I'm assuming you didn't buy it from the company with the world's greatest customer service, and that you probably actually got half decent customer service for for once when buying a Lantac. 
I'm just going to start. I don't, I don't mean to discourage you. You will enjoy that gun. There's a lot of people on the circuit that have had great success uh, with a Raven. Uh, and admittedly, my impression of a Raven is based on one gun that just didn't want to run. Um, so, anyway, congrats on the FAC. Congrats on your, your first gun. Um, if you ever swap me at a range, please come and tap me in and say hello. Otto, uh, Antrag can't make frames, so working with them on UK made frames for it, hoping to have ready prototypes in July and August. So as a little bit of a, a side note, what um, what Otto is sort of known for at the moment as well is this um, this CZ, um, this sort of C a shadow clone, uh, which I actually managed to... Did I do a full video on it? Uh, and reg. Uh, yes, I did. Um, so the, I mean, this video, not not to sort of shine a spotlight on on Otto, uh, but this video was put out at some point. Come on, come on, YouTube. Um, let's bring this up a sec. So this video was June 2020. So it's been it's been a while, um, but I know there's been various issues. Um, now this thing was like an absolute laser beam on the steels. Like I think that was the first string that I'd done with it. Uh, very very impressed, and people have been asking for it um, ever since. Um, probably much to Otto's um, <laughs> like dismay it's probably like his number one like inbox question when's the end track coming out oh and you guys can't see the video because i haven't transitioned it there we go um this is let me let me start that again <laughs> um yeah very very nice bit of kit high very high quality gun um but obviously you know we were talking earlier about low production or or sort of special production uh guns uk legal guns like I think this is sort of case in point of the issues. You go to someone and say, like, look, I want to have 20, 40, 50 of these made. And, you know, these are factories that are used to pumping out guns in the hundreds or thousands. So, you know, they're sort of like, Ugh, we can't, not like, no. Especially what what's going out on elsewhere in the world. You know, they, they really have only one real focus um, and that's supplying the arms that they've been making, you know, these special orders, they, they're they just really reluctant to, to get involved. And I believe that's been the the issue so far, um, well, as Otto has said, so Antreg can't make the frames. But it will be fantastic to um, to have those on the UK market. I know there's a lot of people that have been waiting for them, and it will be great to see them uh, finally available and Otto saying alpha is available from mere side armory awesome thanks for that happy any updates on your FAC 12 weeks down for me and no phone call yet uh, no there hasn't been an update um, I think we touched on this last week where i'm at at the moment is um i'm now w without huge protest from hampshire firearms um now a servant of um connor's rfd um that's a big step for us that really allows you know i've been chomping at the bit to like i'm not an organized person but i do all of the organization for macleod um i sort of have to be organized so you know, in terms of production, production schedules, uh, stock levels, uh, shipments, um, customer service, emails, finance accounts, that sort of stuff. Um, that that's my day to day job. So you know, anybody that's bought something from Magload or phoned or or emailed, um, more often than not, or even messaged through Facebook, more often than not, it will be myself that you that you deal with, and it makes perfect sense. Or it you know. Yeah, it makes perfect sense for me to, as part of the organizational and sort of legal side of things is to run the RFD side of things in terms of logging guns in and out, ammo in and out, firearm sales, the paperwork, um, you know, buying guns in for modified, with, you know, and all of that. And, you know, 
Connor's time is very limited and it is it's far more there's far more return uh, for the business to have Connor's sat there making stuff um you know be that magazines be be that you know bolt weights firing pins stuff like that all the new stuff that's that's coming out you know ppq upgrades as we were showing the the other week and you know so far he's had to be doing all the rfd stuff um now that i'm a servant it opens up for for me to start managing that and to, for me to overlook that um to the point that now um we're going to be doing a little bit of a sneak peek uh but we're going to be doing a made um a, a made by magload um or built built by magload uh s series not 100 percent on the name yet but you get the general idea um which is tuned guns so we're not really interested like if you want to come to us and buy a bog standard 1522 or you want to come to us and buy your bog standard um, I say bog standard, but you just want to buy an out of the box Benelli um, M2 Speed. Be more than happy to hook you up with that and, and help you out. But what we want to get into is is building um, race competition ready guns. Uh, you know, buying in M2 fields and completely mag loading them. Uh, buying in 1522s and completely mag loading them so that you can come in and everything's been done to it and it's not just you know fitting the mag load parts to it it's it's about the the small big different tweaks uh that that some guns require to get them running 100 percent. so that 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 for me is some of the like the biggest step forward is is being a servant and not having sort of Hampshire breathing down my neck in that regard. In terms of my FAC, it is purely just a waiting game. I've had my interview. Uh, my solicitor has been in touch to chase them. And they've said, look, really busy. Um, ba basically a mixture of COVID and what's going on in, in Plymouth. They're behind. They're, they're, there's a lot more work going on behind the scenes because of mainly Plymouth. So they're, they're backlogged. Um, so they told me two or three months, and that was a couple of weeks ago. So it's, you know, I'm going to be looking... Um, probably August, September time, until I hear anything. Um, and we will see see that go where that goes. They have agreed that the report that they hand to the chief of police is going to be handed to my solicitor first, so that she's able to go through that and and I don't know do anything that's needed. And yeah, that that's really the first that's the first I will know that things are moving once again. That it's not just sat sat in the pile. Um, is you know when my solicitor gives me the email and says, look, I've got I've got the report you know I, either it's it's good it can go ahead or we we want to raise this this or this so we will um we will see where that goes so yeah no, no real update from beforehand but um you know i think this is why i said it last week or the week before you will start seeing me shoot lbps lbrs section one shotguns again um don't don't get your knickers in a twist it's um it's it will all be uh all as a servant for the pur purposes of the rfd um and you know don't don't look at me with a funny face if you come down to the gun shop and um and i'm the one that sells you a gun <laughs> we haven't got into dodgy dealings it's all above board uh but anyway um just as a quick reminder don't forget to like and subscribe it does make a huge difference and it makes me feel warm and fuzzy in my pants wasn't meant to say that out loud but anyway Uh, next time you both come to Nitsa, if I'm free, you're welcome to stay at our spare room um, and scoot around in the spare MX-5. <laughs> Sorry. I mean, like, so 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 long as EasyJet doesn't cancel your flights. Um, awesome. Yeah, we may, may have to take you up on that. Although, I don't think you realise what you're getting into allowing Connors and I loose in an MX-5. Um... Tokyo Drift theme tune currently playing in in the uh, in the back of uh, back of my head. Although the image also of Connors and I driving around in an MX5 will probably ask a lot of questions. Um, but yeah, that would be that'd be absolutely uh, awesome. Really appreciate that offer. Uh, Adam King forty seven, love your channel, mate. I learned so much from you. Do you, do you think air gun laws here in England 
will get strict to like Scotland. I'm a collector and don't have an FAC. Well, again, thanks to hear you. You like the channel. We appreciate that. Um, in terms of air gun, air gun laws um, in England getting stricter, there's actually been a number of uh, sort of official stances from the Home Office in this regard. This isn't sort of speculation or, or guesswork and perhaps not verbatim, but along the lines of they feel that the air gun restrictions are good enough. The, we always get these scares, you know, in in unfortunate circumstances when, you know, children are, are hurt or worse or there's a push from, um, you know, animal cruelty uh, campaigns in terms of cats being shot and things like that. Um, you know, it's, it's horrific. No one likes that. But the government has actually sort of twigged and gone, well, the sort of people that are going around shooting children and th shooting cats are not the sort of people that are going to hand in their guns and get a um, get an air gun license, are they? Right, and that's exactly what we've seen in in Scotland. Um, no significant or or any real measurable reduction in air gu in air gun crime. People, you know, kids are still being shot, cats are still being shot, and it was some pathetic minuscule percentage of the uh, sort of estimated air guns in circulations wherever handed in um, and it's very much apparent that the majority of air guns that you know that that are out there aren't are, are still out there unlicensed you know so it, it costs the the scottish and probably the the british taxpayer tens of millions of pounds to do to do that um licensing and there's been absolutely no result and i think you know in a way as as much as it's you know this is at the cost of the scots they've taken a, a real lead pellet for us um boom they you know they've demonstrated how ineffective air gun licensing is and actually if you want to have an effect then licensing isn't isn't going to be uh, the route and that's pretty much the stance that's what i read reading between the lines that's the stance of the home office at the moment which is yeah look at scotland a lot of money a lot of time wasted no real results i think we can take that as a you know as a an example of what not to do in in regards to air guns so i don't have any fears that air guns are going to be licensed anytime soon you never know what's around the corner but that's that's just my general feel about it Adam, is it true knife crime went up dramatically in the UK after all the restrictions on guns over there? Um, I don't know in terms of knife crime. I know that we do have a ridiculously high level of knife crime. Uh, actually, compare you know comparing it to other countries in in the world, um, you know it's this really funny, complex sort of thought process, is, is it? Isn't it like? <laughs> You know, tougher restrictions on guns, harsher penalties for illegal possession, this, that, and the other. Um, you know, makes it does make it harder for the criminals to get hold of guns. Does make it does make it a slightly it does make it a slight deterrent. Um, but crims are going to crims. They find another weapon that they can get hold of easily. You know, is it better that people are being stabbed rather than shot? Like, I think at at the end of the day, it's people that are being ki like hurt and killed. Um, and, you know, men have, or say humans have for a very long time found very ingenious ways to torture and kill one another. So, you know, it's, well, we, I'll segue into, into what's got, what happened recently, um, in, into the U S about this, you know, at pretty much this exact, um, sort of point, which is, you know, your gun laws are terrible because of all your mass shootings. And they turn around and say, well, yeah, but you've got, um, you've got mass stabbings, right? You know, people are still being hurt. People are still being killed. Um, so this, this, I think only sort of really hit today. Um, US Republican tells UK journalists to go home in dispute over gun laws. Um, and the, the journalist, the UK journalist has been named now, um, but I was only, I managed to catch that very briefly before we went live. Um, but I, I take, it's, it's just, I say take exception to it. I just, it really does knock me. Um, so they're talking about, um, obviously, you know, 
uh, gun laws and gun control at the moment, given that what, of, with what happened in Texas. Um, and uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene, uh, U.S. representative for Georgia, said it was the party's job to defend the Second Amendment, which is the right to bear arms. In response, at the time, an unidentified British journalist said, journalist said, we don't have guns in the UK. That is true. But we don't have mass shootings either. Children aren't scared to go to school. Well, we, we sort of touched on this a couple of weeks ago where they were trying to use the UK and, you know, the, the aftermath and changes made from, you know, after Dunblane and this, that and the other, right? We still very much do have guns, right? And unfortunately, as, you know, Plymouth will, will be able to attest, we still have mass shootings, right do we have the same level of of mass school shootings in you know as in the us thankfully not uh, but then we do have a ridiculously high level of knife crime i think it was was it 2020 or maybe 2019 or maybe it was somewhere within the last few years there were over 100 people killed um stabbed to death in london alone you know again is it any better that they're being stabbed with a with a knife or shot with a gun um so yeah but this sort of miss like we we do have guns right and and actually like okay it's sort of a it's sort of an advertisement or maybe a uh and some sort of ad, ad, ad yeah like advert for gun control or licensing or certification and and that's not how i i mean this um but I think the UK should be used by the likes of um, uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene as a as an example of where some somewhere where you can own guns and there isn't a gun problem. You know, we have on average something like 15, 20 deaths per year due to guns out of a population of 70 million, right? If you want to use the UK as an example use it as an example of a country that has gun ownership and doesn't have a gun problem which again comes back to the old uh sort of you know what we all know the no shit sherlock which is the guns aren't the issue <laughs> right if you can have places across the world consistently like look at sweden and norway and finland look at um you know switzerland is the one that's used you know, quite a lot even France and Germany have fairly high gun ownership rates, right? There are an abundance of high firearms ownership rate countries and very low gun crime, gun death stats, right? The, you know, America is not necessarily an outlier, but there are certainly many examples to contradict this theory um, that, more guns equals more gun crime it you know looking at an abundance of other countries that there there isn't that correlation there is something bigger at play that it comes down to you know social issues it comes down to mental health issues it comes down to you know the the likes of the poverty line um and and things like that much bigger equations and a lot more variables going on and and i just hate I hate it when the UK it's like there are no guns here. Like that is now the assumed like fact, right? That you know, if we say it enough times it will become true. There's like there's there's okay, you know, we don't exactly have the highest gun rate ownership, highest rate of firearms ownership in the world, but there's still over 7 750,000 licensed firearms owners um in the UK right there's still millions of legally held guns up and down the country i mean you know if you were to put it by a per mile basis you know there's you know statistically you know it's one in a hundred so in every street there's going to be a couple of gun owners right it's guns are not that rare shooting is not that uncommon in sport shooting you know the the pursuit of sports shooting is not that uncommon in the uk and these journalists that are going out there and specifically involving themselves you know purpose purposefully involving themselves in this gun debate like 
learn your shit beforehand because you're making yourself look like a tit and you're making the whole of the UK look like a tit. It's it just really pisses me off. You know, these just really uneducated, just sort of morons, you know, that you're out there reporting on gun crime, like, or, or you know, gun control. Like, one thing, like, yeah, if you're going to focus on the US side of things and know your shit about that, then fair fair play. But when you start trying to, you know, well, I'm from the UK and the UK doesn't have guns. No, you assume the UK doesn't have guns because that's what the majority of the media takes the line of, right? But yeah, I think she's come over, yes, she's come over like a tit and unfortunately more, you know, the British shooting community um, has probably lost a couple of cred points with, with the US out of it. But yes, anyone from the US watching, apologies. We're not all like that. There are some, you know, gun gun loving shooting enthusiasts over here, and we're ashamed to see that we're being represented by tit wanks like that. Um, but yeah, I th- I think I think Marjorie Taylor Greene got her um, got her point across succinctly. Uh, the U.S. politician then fired back that the U.K. has mass stabbings and all kinds of murder, and you've got laws against that. Like, you know, do you want to, how do you stop somebody from getting shot? You know, make the guns illegal. Well, why don't we make shoot, shooting somebody illegal? <laughs> right. That's, that's already a law. Shit. Why isn't it working? Because <laughs> crims are going to crim. Um, yeah. Mass stabbings, all kinds of murder. And you've got laws against that. Uh, defiantly, the reporter said the murder rates are not the same as the US. The, Republic- the Republican concluded, well, you can go back to your country and worry about your non, your no guns. We like ours here. Uh, she later posted the exchange online and defended our God-given American gun rights. Um, yeah, she said the US does not need more gun control. Um yeah, so li- little little shooting uh, nugget there uh, from this week. Another spicy nugget uh, f- from from this week is a little update on Devon and Cornwall. For so yeah, unfortunately, this is like maybe the slightly more negative area of the stream. I've tried to keep it as positive for a, for as long, but unfortunately, not all news is good. So some of you will remember the I think it's been dubbed by field sports like the the gun grab or what do they call it the um authoritarian action from police failings uh, but they're basically calling it a gun grab uh, and this is off the back of the Plymouth shooting um that we had it was like last year last August and and basically for those that don't know it's well known that Devon and Cornwall um police made a number of quite obvious mistakes in the processing of this guy's certificate. The guy shouldn't have had the certificate, and yet it was given out to him uh, anyway. And in knee-jerk reaction fashion, they've gone through all of the previous applications and grants and renewals, and they've left, right, and centre started to revoke people's certificates for seemingly no reason. There was an update on somebody else um, a little while ago. Things seem to be moving forward uh, with that, but unfortunately, this is not um, taking the same uh, line. And there's a couple of really interesting points that this guy makes in the video. If you want to go and see the video, um, you can head over to fieldsportschannel.tv, and it will be on there. Um, and the article, um, I think it's the it's the Exeter gun case. Um, so this this chap here, Distalker and um, Andrew Andrew, is that? Is that really is that double Andrew? I mean, if if your last name's Andrew, like, why would you call your son Andrew? But that might be a, a mistake. But anyway, supposedly dear stalker Andrew Andrew um, lost his gun certificate appeal. Um, so, well, but basically this guy had his um, certificates revoked in August uh, 2021. He, at the time, was not given a reason for why they were revoked. Um, so he had his firearm certificate revoked. A few days later, armed police came to his house at night and took away his guns, giving no reasons for their their actions. Um, so he's just had his day in court. Um, so, you know, I, th- I think this was a few days ago. might have been on the 20th. But anyway, a few days ago, you know, late June, 
So you're, you're getting on to 10 months. Um, you know, it's been 10 months since he had his guns taken away and his, his certificates. Uh, rev- um, oh, no, sorry. Uh, in August 2021, Andrew had his firearm shotgun certificates renewed. A few days later, armed police came. So it would have been around the Plymouth shooting. Sorry, just a correction on that. Um, but yeah, so this was August. So it's been 10 months. He's finally had his day in court. And uh, apparently the police um, didn't have the correct paperwork. Um, so finally got a court date, but police did not supply the correct papers. So the judge has sent, set a new court date, adding thousands of pounds of cost to Andrew. So he went into this court. He's been waiting this 10 months and goes into court to finally find out what he's supposedly, what he's done. And, you know, from Phil Sports News... They're saying that he doesn't even have so much as a parking ticket. He's never been arrested, no convictions. I don't believe any um, you know, history of, of mental health, not even a parking ticket, right? So he's like, I literally don't know what I've done. And they're still not giving him a reason. And the, the main overarching point that he makes in the, the title of this video, police plan to price shooters out of gun certificates. And what he's saying is to get to this point alone, like this this one day in court, right, that he's turned up to thinking that he's finally going to make some progress and they've gone, oh, yeah, sorry, we don't actually have what we need. We're going to have to move the, the court date. Um, he's now, like, this day alone cost him thousands of pounds to attend in, you know, barrister fees, his own, his own fees. Preparing for this court date, he said it's cost him thousands of pounds. So, you know, you, you could easily be this one date where everything was potentially meant to be sorted has cost him, you know, probably in the region of four to five thousand pounds. And the police sort of have the audacity to turn around and go, no, we still don't have a reason. We don't actually have everything we need and we uh, we're going to move it back. Um, there's this absolutely disgusting thing is they've pushed it back to October 2023. Again, that could be um, a typo. Um, Police have to supply the correct papers at the beginning of July 2023. Like, I, that, that seems... So it says the new court date will be 14 months. I think they've got... Wait, we are in 2022, right? <laughs> I haven't just managed to lose a year. Um... <laughs> Are we are we in twenty two? Oh, what is going on? Um, why am I doubting myself? Um, yes, we are in twenty twenty two. Thank thanks, Mac. Um, I think this is field sports. That's so. I think that's meant to be October twenty three, and they've got to supply it at the beginning. Sorry, October twenty two, and this is July twenty two, um, because that would just be ridiculous. But anyway, e- even so, even if we take the the October 2022 date, that's going to push it another four months. So, you know, that's how they get to the total. So, yeah, I think they've made a couple of errors uh, in the article. So it will be 14 months. It's going to take a total of 14 months to finally find out what he's done to lose his guns, right? And this guy, you know, it's it's not a hobby for him right he's he's controlling land he's a he's a deer stalker he's controlling populations of deer um and he's saying they're running rampant right like yeah you can go and get another person in i'm sure there's loads of people that would happily volunteer to take over that permission and and take over the deer shooting but why should they like the the guy's costing him thousands of pounds in legal fees hasn't got his guns can't go and do the job that he needs to go and do um, and they can't even tell him why. And, you know, what what Phil Sports is getting at is like they're they're on the cusp of setting a very dangerous precedent, which is being able to take away people's guns and never giving them a reason of why. Because how can you fight that? How can you fight the you know, their opinion that you're unsuitable if you have no clue what is in their minds making you unsuitable? And this whole thing about pricing people out of um, shooting sports and firearms ownership, it's not talking about ammo prices or gun prices or even application prices. They're talking about, you know, potentially malicious or um, vexatious, like, 
uh, revocations where they're just chancing their arm. Let's let's revoke this certificate and see see if he has the money to fight me in court. You know, and and I think the you know from looking at it, it's very hard to say that there's not a little bit of that going on. And this has been something that's been discussed far and wide within the shooting community. Of you know, you end you ever no matter what it's regarding firearms or otherwise, if you end up in in court against the police, you're already fighting an uphill battle, right? For a number of reasons, because you know, whilst the you know the um, legal system, the, you know, the judges, the courts are meant to be impartial and separate from the police they're all about law enforcement right they're all sort of on the same side and of course you get one individual stood in front of there saying they've got it wrong and you've got you know a police officer of 20 30 years so you know i'm a police officer of 20 30 years who who do you think they're going to give a little bit more weight to their their opinion or judgment on so it's already an up, uphill battle then you take into account that it doesn't it doesn't bother them like it doesn't come out of their personal pockets to take you know to end up in court with you whereas you if you don't have insurance you've got to cough up every single penny and once again this is why it's absolutely imperative that if you are a uh, a, a potential firearms or shotgun certificate holder in the UK or you're a current firearms or shotgun certificate holder in the UK um, if you want to have anything to do with firearms go and get legal expenses insurance it's really not expensive my my gun plan um uh policy is going to be renewed very shortly i've got a reminder email i think it's 40 45 pound a year right and that gives me a hundred thousand pound legal expenses insurance that covers me for um uh, a rejected uh, application that recovers me for um a uh, revocation it also covers me for criminal um what do they call it like a criminal case regarding firearms you know if if i am suspected of something and i end up in court you know un under um you know i get charged with something so you know it's all that like it, it's the full package plus there's your public liability in case the worst happens while you're out there shooting it, it's even got gun insurance so again if you damage lose or whatever your guns while you're while you're out and about so all of that for 40 45 pound a year um versus and everyone says it you know everyone says it i don't have to worry about having my certificates revoked because i'm not going to do anything wrong ha <laughs> yeah i think i think andrew here uh, is <laughs> would quite disagree with you uh would, would disagree with you quite a bit uh, and there's been a number of these cases where people are seriously scratching their heads of what they've done um, to land themselves in this in this situation so it does happen it can happen for the smallest reason or seemingly no reason at all so if you're if you're fine with yourself thinking that it's not going to happen to you uh, i just hope that you're one of the people that can afford to drop five ten thousand pounds on legal fees uh, if you need it um, because that's what will happen if you don't have insurance you have to cough up this sort of money there's not a lot of people out there that can just write off five or ten thousand pounds and not really blink at it and that's the i think the biggest problem and what this guy's pointing out is if they're going to use this as some sort of tactic as some sort of deterrent there's going to be a lot of people unless they have insurance that will have to give up shooting that won't be able to challenge any decision made against them um and and then they're done for right so get insurance make sure you're covered you know if, if it's not gun plan join the cpsa you know although that's 70 80 quid a year so jump gun plans cheaper um you know even the ngo the national gamekeepers um organization um they start have started offering various levels of of legal expenses insurance the uk psa there's so many even the nra is meant to um the NRA is meant to have legal expenses insurance, um, but when they find out found out my certificate were revoked, they cancelled my membership. So fat lot of fucking good that insurance was. Um, but uh, but anyway, happy. Um, is it worth getting gun pl plan whilst waiting for my grant? Yes. <laughs> like, there's you don't need. Is it worth getting gun plan? Yes. You don't need to 
the 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 only like you haven't had any issues yet my only concern would be that they may if you do have any issues they may say well you applied prior to taking out the insurance but it's one of these cases that I would rather be having that argument with a chance of being insured in the case that something goes wrong, rather than not having it at all and having no argument. Um, it might be worth giving them an email, giving them, you know, like at the end of the day, as far as you're aware, there, there aren't any issues, there's no complications, there's no reason that your certificate should be revoked. So in terms of insuring that, um, you know, in, in insuring the uh, that risk, that shouldn't make a lot of difference. It's like buying a car and then insuring it. It's not you know you can do that you can own a car without insurance um you could own a car for 10 years sat in your driveway without insurance the in, the insurance company is not going to get funny when you phone up one day and want to insure it so um, i'm sure gun plan, plan is going to work um in a in a similar sort of way but yes if you're about to get a certificate in the process of getting a certificate or you currently have a certificate have some level of insurance it's just really you know the yeah, it's 45 quid, right? Yes, that, you know, at the moment, what, what's that like? You know, 400 rounds of 2-2 ammunition. Um, it's worth every single penny of it, just for that peace of mind. And, you know, there's a lot of things. When I first applied for my certificates, I was told about always put your cards on the table. And what they mean by that was your membership cards. Put your NRA card, your Basque card, hmm, um, you know your gun plan card, your you know you know Kentucky Firearms Club membership card. Put all your membership cards on the table, right? And um, you know I've seen this firsthand. They see that like this. This is why you know I went off on one su at such a degree and still do around Basque l dropping their legal expenses insurance because that card, that Basque card back then. Um, would to a degree keep um, FEOs and firearm licensing departments in check because they knew that being a BAS member you could phone up their firearms licensing department at any time get through to somebody that knew what they were talking about that would then phone your FEO or phone your firearms licensing department on um, on your behalf uh, on your behalf and read them the riot act and say stop dicking about that's not how things are done process this guy's application but the only reason that had any sort of merit and the only reason that had any sort of weight behind it was because there was the legal expenses insurance if the firearms licensing department wanted to dig their heels in and still take you to court basque insurance would kick in and you would have the experts plus with you know that you'd have the the firearms experts the legal professionals and the funding to go out there and and fight it Right now, what happens is that, yes, you can still phone up Basque and go, help, I need some advice. I need you to maybe apply a bit of pressure to the FEO or the uh, firearms licensing department. They're going to try their best, and the firearms licensing department is going to go, all right, we'll see you in court. And at which point, Basque now turns around to you and go, ha, 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 yeah, you're on your own now. Sorry. But it's got absolutely no weight behind it. So having a Basque card in, sat in front of them is is literally not worth the plastic it's printed on. Uh, you know, it's still a valuable resource, don't get me wrong, it, you know, and I am tempted, just, you know, it, it, just even having somebody to be able to phone up and just bounce something off of is a very, very valuable resource in those uh, situations, and I do still, quite often, if you guys email or message me, and there's something that I'm not particularly hot on or sure on, I will, tr I will say, if you've got Bass membership, go and ask the firearms licensing team there because, you know, they are very knowledgeable and very experienced and a lot of them have come from firearms licensing and the uh, and the police. Um, and, you know, also neighbours, but, you know, I'll save that for another day. Uh, you know, so it's still a valuable resource, but it just doesn't have the deterrent. Putting a gun plan card on the table during your firearms interview, I think, is going to send a far bigger message to the FEO um, than a bass, bass card, long and short of it. But yes, happy, just get the membership. Got a question here. Is there any firearm insurance in Ireland do you know of? Again, I would talk, I would talk to gun plan, see if they will um see if they offer it 
um, you know, they are, they're a big commercial company. They, um, they should be able to um, help you out. Uh, a little bit of uh, an interesting story uh, that has come out of um, the UK today, I think it was broken, which was, and there's just all kinds of like, like G's on this one. Um, so this is the main story. Suspect, suspected thief shot twice attempting to steal Yamahas and Ducatis from a dress um, in, uh, in Kent. Um, so basically this is a trial that's going on at uh, going on at the moment uh, where it's not the thief that's on the trial it's the the guy uh, or the guys that shot him so uh, four bullets from a glock pistol passed through the arm uh, of uh, rog uh, ross eaglestone as he attempted to free the bikes including yamahas and ducatis parked in uh, copper close uh, greenhith so um yeah suspect thief was shot twice while attempting to steal expensive motorbikes from outside a house a jury uh, has heard now dan again i love you i appreciate you uh thank you for modding you might have your work cut out for the next five minutes um this isn't i i don't want to get into a, a discussion of what we think should be you should be allowed to do like let's just stick to the facts of what the law is what you can and what you can't do um owning any gun owning any object in the uk for the apart from northern ireland for the purposes of self-defense is um is against the law as soon as you own in england scotland and wales if you own any object for the purposes of self-defense it becomes an offensive weapon and possession of an offensive weapon is automatically against the law you then magnify that by owning a specifically prohibited glock pistol um it doesn't matter there's this i've i've seen it and i've read it a number of times um not just within the shooting community here but by you know just general people when they have these sorts of discussions about this sort of fantasy that in you know in this sort of this exact case and although you know the people is normally discussed in in the realms of a life or death situation um but like you know let's use that you're in a life death you know you let's say and i don't condone this in, in any way shape or form you should you know at the end, end of the day if you're interested in firearms you need to stay whiter than white and stay well clear of the uh, illegal aspects of it um but hypothetically speaking let's say you've like these guys you've got yourself uh, a glock um you know, it's illegal you know it's illegal but you want it for protection because you have this fantasy that if you're ever attacked and you draw that gun and you shoot somebody and and you defend yourself as a, a justified um you know defense um you're still going to get dragged through the courts right because you were in possession of an illegal gun you know no matter what the circumstances somebody trying to steal your motorbikes somebody trying to kill you if you are in possession of an object that is specifically prohibited in law using it for in a way a justified reason or justified person or, or yeah just yeah justified um yeah in a justified situation or an you know, arguably justified situation or whatever doesn't autumn doesn't suddenly make it unillegal that you were you were carrying that illegal object um and i i really don't know what these guys were were thinking right um it, like the i wouldn't be surprised if the thief gets off absolutely absolutely scot-free out of this okay he's been shot i'm sure there's a lesson to be learned there somewhere but you know he's now been in in terms of the eyes of the law he is now being viciously viciously uh, assaulted um you know and I, I granted there's going to be some american viewers here and you know the laws are very different uh, out in the in the us at the end of the day we you can defend yourself and property in the uk and this is where it becomes a very muddled gray area is that whilst it's illegal to possess or, or have for those purposes uh, an object um using any object any legally held object um to defend yourself or property is lawful as long as it's justified 
Um, so, you know, if they had picked up a, a I don't know, a, a mic stand and chased this guy down the street with him and beat him over the head a couple of times, um, I'm sure there wouldn't be an issue, right? Because it's not illegal to have a mic stand or, you know, whatever. Like, you know, um, I'm trying everything not to say baseball bat. Um, <laughs> pair of golf clubs, um, just anything, a long, hard, cylindrical thing, um, <laughs> oh wait, that turns into a rape, uh, it's, uh, y- you know what I'm saying, it's like any object that is, t- is to hand that you end up picking up and you use to defend y- your property or yourself, um, as long as it's justified, you know, it used to be, uh, what, you know, a, p- a proportionate fourth, uh, f- force, um, but now I think they change it and it's something like justified, but, you know, don't get me wrong, you pull out your illegal Glock and shoot somebody with it, no matter what the situation here in the UK, apart from Northern Ireland, um, you are going to go to prison. And But it's really interesting to see, you know, in, within the shooting community and outside of it, people's reaction to this. Because, of course, there are people on one side going, absolutely fucking lootly if someone was trying to steal my Ducati. Um, I, you know, I'd want to shoot him with a Glock. And then you've got the other side of the thing going, you know, the, the other side of the argument going, um, nobody's life is worth, um, is, is worth more than your possessions. Um, you know, and that's really, you know, it's, it's a really polarizing, really, you know, two ends of a story there. Um, but as the law, you know, stands, yeah, if they'd have picked up a, you know, a, a golf club and, and, you know, warned the guy off um it would be a very very different situation than it that it is but this I, I just wanted to sort of dispel the myth that if you have something you know people that like smuggle in um tasers you know oh it'll be okay if i ever have to use the t- taser it will be justified it's an illegal object you know I'm, I'm not getting into the discussion of whether that's right or wrong but it's the facts the facts are um they are illegal and it doesn't matter in what situation you use it you will face the criminal charges um that come with being in possession of that um illegal illegal object geez up 1982 you're wrong about owning anything for self-defense that only applies to public places See the Prevention of Crime Act 1953. In a private place, you can keep a legal object for defence. Interesting. Um, although Daniel's just swung his ban hammer. Um, <laughs> I I will uh, have a have a look at that. Um, uh, I, I will have a look at that. Daniel Lastrow. <laughs> never piss off the Daniel uh, <laughs> um, so it is still illegal regardless if the force applied was reasonable um, it's still illegal like if you're still using an illegal object to do so um, then yeah it doesn't matter Th- this is what I mean is like you know if someone comes at you with a sawn off shotgun and you happen to have an illegal Glock and you shoot them dead um, like you're probably not going to go away for murder, like because in terms of the whole self-defense thing, um, it was justified and, and reasonable in that situation. But you were still in possession of an illegal firearm, which is a, a minimum for five year sentence. So it's like this, like somehow because you've just saved your own life, the crime that you committed in preparing yourself to save your life, like that, that that's suddenly just going to get washed away. Um, that's not that's not how how it works. Uh, even if a PPW is used legally in Northern Ireland, you can be expected to be dragged through the courts to establish proportionate response. You're like a- absolutely, and and you know that's going to be a mountain of paperwork, a mountain of of legal fees. Um, using a gun that's legal to use, like never never mind one that's that's in an illegal possession so again just really interesting to see like people's thoughts and the discussions that 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 article has has generated um you know like like don't get me wrong like if somebody wanted to come after the gt4 
I will use all legal means necessary um, to make sure that they don't make off with a car. Um, but I'm not going to start breaking the law having having things that I should not have um, for that purpose. Because, you know, in, in my mind, um, like, it, it's actually more... Like, obviously, th these guys really did not give any single fucks. But in, in my mind, it's actually going to be a deterrent for me to go out there and stop it right um you know it's like if i go out there with my illegal glock and i end up using it like i'm fucked like <laughs> like these guys are like they're going away and they're going to go away for a fairly long time um you know i i don't want that hesitation i i want to be able to to go out and you know defend myself or my property to the fullest extent of the law confident that i know what i'm doing is is legal um you know, and I know the whole, you know, judge by, um, judge by 12 rather than carry by six and, um, and, and all of that, like, it's, it's still not worth it. You know, you have that hesitation. It, again, it's very different. Any US people watching very, very different when you know you've got the full constitution behind you in, in, in that sense. In the UK, um, you know, you you have to be, you have to know the law, you have to know what you are allowed to do, how far you're allowed to go. Um, again, I'm not saying it's it's right or wrong. That's a different discussion for maybe a different time or different place. Uh, but that is the state of play. That's how uh, things are. Do a collab with back, black belt barrister regarding self defence laws. Um, yeah, that that could be that could be very interesting. Um, I have seen seen a few of him a few of his stuff. Gun plan doing thirty percent off at the moment, so uh, twenty five eighty nine for public liability and legal cover. No brainer, absolutely, um, absolutely. Um, just do it at that at that price. It's just that's probably the base price. Um, when you add a few things on, it might go up, but still, just do it. Um, Right, I hope um, there might be a few of you that have, have hung on this far, so thank you for that in regards to um, the next topic, which is the Maglode 2.2 AR-15 uh, magazines. So, um, so for those of you that don't know, Maglode, have, we've been in development. It has admittedly taken longer than we had, had expected which again we're incredibly sorry for and really do appreciate uh, all your guys patience um, that have pre-ordered um, so for those of you that don't know um, we will be releasing a um, sort of universal 2.2 LR AR-15 magazine uh, that's going to come standard with 32 rounds and you're going to be able to use it in a variety of different guns um, with certain adapters. So things like the 1522, any gun that's running the better mag, um, there will also be additional adapters. So you can run it in a, a Tipman M422, Chris Defiance, um, CMMG, or, you know, CMG converted guns without the better mag. Um, so it really is, you know, the real popular ones um out there on the market this will be compatible in one way or another um, and we had a huge update which was um we had a magazine come from the ejection molders um last week and we are slowly but surely getting there um so i was able to test this uh, last weekend uh, there unfortunately were a few updates uh, or changes needed to the re the design at the end of the day we are going for a hundred percent reliability here, um, and you know when it comes to the magazine, you can't cut corners. You can't have oh it's it's good enough. It needs to be absolutely one hundred percent, one hundred percent of the time, and we're just not there yet. But there was a number of changes um, that we sent straight back to the injection molders. They made the changes very quickly, and we actually had new um samples of the these or new test pieces from the tweak design uh, in the office today and it's it's very 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 close just on testing things in the office we're going to be down the range tomorrow giving it a, a live fire test um i still think there's going to be some tweaks needed but we're looking um we're probably now looking no more than a week before 
uh, production. That's um, you never know what's going to happen. Like things always change, but um, very very close. This is the most promising that we've we've had from just testing with dummies in in the office. Uh, Connors was very very chipper today because you know we we don't like the fact that it's taken so long. Um, you know, it's a big it's a big weight on Connors because you know this is his design. It's sort of you know, and it's the the company's name on on the line with it. Um, that's the way we we look at it. We're taking that you know incredibly seriously, and every day that these aren't being shipped out is just another day of just worrying for us in in for lack of a better word. Um, so it really is all hands on deck testing these, tweaking these, you know, getting it getting it right. Um, and that's all Connors did today. Uh, like literally, you know, we we had a an order from our um uh finish uh wholesaler um a few days ago um and they you know they they want a number of turn parts connor's has been on that on the machine churning out those parts um as soon as these mag came in he dropped that and got straight onto to the mags it really is our number one priority at the moment but he has enough after tomorrow when once we've gone down the range he have enough to go back to the injection molders um it will take them maybe a day or two to to make those um to make the the further changes um, and then we're hoping to have the the final test pieces end of next week um, and then we'll be able to say hit it and we're probably talking a week or two after that um, so yeah it's it's going to be it's still going to probably be another few weeks uh, but we're making good progress all the time and, and again a huge thank you to everyone that's um, um, everyone that's been so patient and so understanding with it and and also like the people you know by pre-ordering we we take that as a huge vote of confidence you know for uh, for a company to pre-order stuff and for people to to hand money on on a faith like we understand that that trust um and it's certainly not going to be uh, be abused and part of the reason it's it's causing us so many sleepless nights not having the, the magazines out we really really are trying everything we can and it's it is getting there and that's a big part of why we wanted to put that video out we don't usually put out like testing videos prior to the uh, product being launched but we just want to show everyone you know, maybe even reassure everyone that they they do exist they they do work it is a thing um it just needs to be right we you know and i've said this to a number of people i might have even said it last last week on the stream um we would rather refund every single one of you than send you something that we are less than happy with um and it needs to be 100 percent. and you know the my my thing um you know i i get involved with the with the testing um say to connor's we we are not sending these out unless both of us are 100 percent happy to use one of these in competition um and that's the asset te asset test for me if i'm not prepared to take that magazine and run it in a competition why the hell would i be selling it to somebody so um so yeah that's that's the level you know we we need to be happy with it um, once it is we will sell them and then you know the whole point of this is that there should be a forever plentiful supply of magazines um, for uh, for people's mini rifles here in the UK and we won't have the the dip um, the you know the peaks and troughs of uh, you know previous mag availability we will get there it's just um, taking longer than we thought uh, need sweets as compensation everyone will get sweets and and don't get me don't don't worry I've I've got your fans. Um, we, I, I want to. I don't know what it's going to be to what extent, but we want to do something as a thank you, um, not just for people, you know, not just for the fact that you've pre-ordered it, but people that have have waited. I don't know what that's going to be yet, but don't don't get too excited. It might just be an extra bag of Haribo, <laughs> but we we do want to do a little something that everyone that's pre-ordered them will get something a little extra, um, in in some some way um but yeah just just as a small uh, small thank you is there any improvement in ruger 1022 magazines possible um yeah you buy a 1522 good consumer advice is always there um, <laughs> um it depends the 10 round it, it depends which one there's two variants there's the black there's the black genuine Ruger ones and then there's like the clear genuine Ruger ones and I think the clear ones you need to stay away from 
or the 25 round magazines you stay away from the 10 rounders the genuine 10 rounders are pretty bulletproof the 20 rounders are when some in problems are introduced as far like so yeah i think there's probably an improvement to be made in the 25 rounders um but not really a huge improvement to be made in the in the 10 rounders they're pretty as uh, pretty reliable as they get It's also interesting that they mentioned that the two brothers who used the Glock pistol had recently been to shooting range in Texas. I read another article about a guy who got caught 3D printing. Jesus. Uh, yeah, I did actually did actually read the bit about um, Texas. Um, and it was like... I, I don't get the link. <laughs> like, you know, oh, they went... They went shooting in Texas recently, so that justifies why they had a Glock. Like, I don't know what you're really saying there. Like, they obviously had an interest in, like, you know, they said, you know, firearms paraphernalia. Now, that, you know, did he have a genuine, genuine interest in, in firearms and was just buying illegal shit or obtaining illegal shit? Or, you know, were they trying to make it sound like he was a fan of, you know, a, a, a genuine enthusiast turned rogue? Or was it just somebody that had a load of illegal gun stuff? Like, you know, it's all paraphernalia for what, you know, one for one word. Um, yeah, I don't really get that. Yeah, that does, that is a bit like, you know, well, why would they make that point? Um, but no, I, I, I don't think we have to be worried about them using that against you if you go on a shooting holiday. Leon, what would be a good semi-automatic -auto tutu in an AR-style platform? Um, if you're asking for tutu AR-15 recommendations, 15 uh, Smith and Wesson 1522 really can't go wrong with it for the for the money. Very hard to beat for the money. Um, if you're in the UK, highly recommend looking at um, an Aero Precision build from Cotswold Classic Arms. That's going to run you in the region of about twelve to fifteen hundred pounds. A battle arms build from Cotswold Classic Arms that's going to probably start from about two to a half thousand pounds, um, or even a Lantac LASF 15. Um, those would be all my recommendations. I really don't think you can go wrong with any one of those guns. My personal pick was is like if money's not an object, go for the battle arms. If 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 you want if you want to save your money and and you know get your best bang for the buck go for the 1522 and if you you know don't mind spending a bit of money you want to get you know something you know decent quality something that's going to you know the 1522s last but like something with more longevity a uh, higher build quality um then go for the aero uh, that is really your sort of middle ground um really the two ends there and then and then the middle ground for the 22 market here um, but the 1522 is really a great rifle for people starting out. Like at the end of the day, you don't know what you don't know. And you know, I was having this conversation with somebody the other day that you know people fall in the trap of they rush out and they go and buy, um, you know, they go and buy a Benelli M2 Speed. They go and spend sixteen, seventeen hundred, seventeen hundred pound on a on a brand new shotgun, and then they realise that they don't get on with an inertia gun, that they don't get on with the M2 and a year two years later they're they're outlaying another 15 1600 pound on a beretta uh comp pro right you know yes there's the buy once cry once um yes there's you know you pay your money you you, you know you, you get what you get what you pay for but when you're just starting out the gun is not going to be the main um, performance differentiator right you can chuck somebody um you know, a world champion winning gun, they're still going to be, you know, um, d down the scores, right? It's all about experience and um, and training. Um, and, you know, you can do that and start getting that with a with a Stoger M3K, you know, in that regard. And, and that's what a lot of people say all of the time is that instead of going and spending 1,500, 2,000 pounds on a, on a shotgun, go and spend 400 quid 
and buy 10,000 cartridges. You know, um, well, no, maybe not 10,000 because that's a shitload of cartridges. But, you know, basically, you know, go and spend, a th- you know, go and spend 500 quid on a gun and a thousand pounds on cartridges. You will be a much better shooter at the end of the those cartridges and that gun um, than if you had gone and spent 1,500, 2,000 pounds on, on a on a gun on its own. And the 1522 is sort of like the best example of that. It's there is a ceiling to its performance, certainly in its in its long range performance that we're seeing because of the flex in the receiver. It's personally something I've never really had a problem with, but it is something that I've seen cost people places and and hinder their performance in in matches. Um, and that's why people are moving over to full metal. But again, for a starter sort of mid tier shooter you're not going to really notice those problems it's not going to make a huge amount um, of difference for you and the best thing about the 1522 is that they actually hold their money fairly well you're not going to use because they're still a very popular gun if you look after it you take good care of it and it's doing good nick you've either got a great backup gun if you go to if you start going to serious level comps or you know a gun that you've bought for 700 quid you'll be able to sell you know on gun trader for for 500 quid and get the majority of your your money back and i would say go for the 1522 practice get some experience and then maybe later down the line invest in something more but if you want to push the button on something a bit fancy now again go go for the the aero precision build or a, or a battle arms you're really not going to go wrong uh, with that um uh, and on that note and before all of you go make sure you hit that like button um and hit that subscribe button uh, but i am going to um call it there i hope you've enjoyed this evening i hope you've uh, found the topics interesting i think you know again very excited for the course to be uh, coming out um again as soon as i can get my hands on one i will and i'll, I'll, I'll do a full overview video of it and hopefully get down the range um, and be able to do sort of a full review video uh, of it uh, but yeah again everyone thanks very much for joining i hope you all have a fantastic week uh, ahead um, sorry there hasn't been a lot of sort of normal standalone videos um, just time time to edit but i've got a lot in the editing queue there will be stuff um, coming out very uh very very soon i've got a backlog so keep an eye on that make sure you subscribe to catch that content and of course we do this every single week um half 8 p.m uk time on a thursday so if you have like if you're new and you've watched this stream um if you liked it then make sure you hit that subscribe button as well and then we will um we will see you next time uh so yeah have a fantastic week um get as much shooting as you can in and of course as always i hope to see you soon <laughs>